Hey everyone, how are you doing? Hope you're creating some awesome art. Today I will be sharing this female portrait that I did in Big Pin on Bristol Vellum. And I also want to include a little bit of this hike that I did to the James Peak Wilderness. And it's a, um, that's a really gorgeous trail and it's one that I did recently. This is a St. Mary's Glacier. So I'll be adding a little footage of that in um, with this time-lapse tutorial. So I'm just getting into her right eye. And of course, it always looks a little weird to begin with. When you're starting an outline, it always has that funny phase I'd call the ugly phase. But, you know, you just got to keep pushing through it. And once you push through the ugly phase, you get to the beautiful phase. Um, and that is just a series of lots of layers and shading and whatnot. Um, I also want to mention that this uh, particular portrait that I've done has been turned into a course, which you can access on my um, website, tybluart.com. So I'll be going super in depth in my course on how I did this drawing and how you can do it too and break it down step by step. But I'll definitely give you some tips and tricks in this video here. So for the most part, you can see I'm using an orange cartridge pin, which represents the fine tip pin of the big pins. And I really like to use that a lot for the face, especially for details such as eyes and especially creating really fine hairs, um, drawing around the highlights of the hair and whatnot. So I'll definitely use a lot of the fine point pin, but I'll also use some of the medium and thick point pins to block off some of like the larger areas, like the background and some big chunks of dark within her hair. So you can see for the background, I am using a dark cartridge pin that represents the thickest point pin and it covers quite a large amount of area in a small amount of time. And we bring this interruption to you by some beautiful mountain lakes and some high mountain peaks. Still a lot more up to go. I am, am probably at uh, over 12,000 feet right now. There is like no oxygen and still a lot more, more up. <sighs> As you can see, while I'm not drawing, I do a lot of hiking because Colorado is a gorgeous state that I live in and there is so much beautiful hiking to be done around here and beautiful skiing to be done in the wintertime. So this particular drawing took me over 17, maybe 18 hours to do in total. And um, I find this to be a very slow medium just because you can't erase. So uh, I go about it very cautiously. Um, I tend to do a lot of layers. So when I am doing the skin, such as I'm doing in the forehead here, um, I'm going in super light and I'm just going in back and forth um, over it many times with the cross hatching cross hatching and then um, scribbles to kind of soften those hatching marks and make those lines look really nice and smooth um, really nice smooth skin tone and of course I feel like I could probably do a full tutorial on eyes alone but here I definitely made sure to block out the highlights with drawing little tiny circles to begin with before I really start shading it in and even when I'm drawing shadows I um, in the outline, we'll kind of draw, map out where those shadows are within the face. Um, and that really kind of helps like where are the value differentiations within this portrait that I'm drawing. That really helps to, to kind of like tell where things should be darker and not as dark. Because sometimes that can be really confusing if you just draw kind of like the main features and you don't necessarily draw like where the darks are going to be a little bit darker versus lighter. One thing I find particularly challenging with portraits is um, drawing teeth if they're showing and we're getting a little bit here. So drawing teeth that don't look cartoonish with these strong outlines around them and getting some nice value changes um, without looking weird or distorted or uh, strange can be a big challenge. So I definitely go in depth in my course on, on how to draw teeth and mouths.
So I think one thing that kind of threw me off with this part of the drawing was that it kind of looks a little bit like a beard, um, the shadow here. And sometimes like that can happen. So just keep going because that again, that is going to be like the ugly phase that you just need to work through. And once you put down all the values on your drawing, it's going to go from looking incorrect to looking just fine, looking great. And I don't know about you, but I find like once we get past that, um, the ugly phase or the awkward phase, we really start to make progress. But I find a lot of um, beginners or just like a lot of people who um, start drawing and they go into that awkward phase at first and then they they decide like, oh, it's not any, it's, my drawing's not any good, so I'm just going to stop right here. And then they don't continue on. But it's like, that's just, they have to go through that weird phase. And then they, you know, come out to the other side where they get a beautiful piece of art. So the discipline here is to keep going. Don't quit. Don't quit when you're in the strange, awkward phase. Um, because keep adding those layers and keep adding more. And it's going to come out looking really beautiful. So you can see as I'm going into her hair, I'm using that medium point pen. Again, that's the clear cartridge. And that's going to block off a few more darks and get into that um, rich blue hues that I really like from this big pen. And I think, you know, at this point and even beforehand, we can really see how the lights and darks really make her face like pop and make it really come to life. And that is where getting to know values, tonal values, really comes in handy. It makes your your work of art look so vibrant and so alive. Even as I'm getting into her shoulder and arm and kind of the rest of her body in this portrait, um, the values are really, really crucial here because it's easy just to kind of glaze over this area because we like to focus on like the eyes, the face, and you know, not so much the background, not so much the rest of the subject matter. But I definitely challenge you to keep going, keep your attention strong here and really make the rest of this piece look really amazing um, or your piece. So here I really try to look out for the tonal values, all the um, variations, the gentle variations within her shoulder and her back and really try to pull those out and kind of play on those and make those look really dynamic and alive. So I really love mapping out those darks first, oftentimes just to kind of get an idea of where they are and then kind of filling in the values around them, kind of smoothing them out with hatching, cross hatching and scribbles. And you'll see how I'm going through those ugly phases and then it comes out to the other side looking, looking good, looking just fine. So as I finish up the rest of the background, I'm noticing that it is not completely black. It is um, very dark, but her hair is actually darker. And I also finished it up by um, scribbling the whole background in so it smooths out the cross hatching. And here we have the finished piece. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Right, I made it to James Peak, uh, the the top. I think what thirteen thousand and three hundred and six feet or something. Probably like the I think the highest that I've been this season. You're so cute! Oh my gosh! Look at you.